Hello and welcome back to my Tashi chapter 12, I believe. We're getting there. I don't <laughs> I don't remember how how much chapters each arc had, but I'm pretty sure just by going by the timeline, this should be the chapter where Reek and Satoto get killed and then the next one might be the last one. Which is pretty exciting. It's a weekend, so I'm actually recording this in the day. I, usually during the weekends I record the other stuff, but like this is just too exciting. Honestly, it's it's so exciting that it it kind of keeps me up at night. So <laughs> I actually kind of want to try to record it earlier. <laughs> um, and prepare for a slightly long intro because I have a couple stuff to say. Uh, first off, I've been asked to play the console arts. I've been asked in the past too, I think either on video or in Discord. Um, I probably will. If you didn't see, I did I did do a reaction video to the openings, which you should check out if you want. I don't know. It's, <laughs> it was pretty fun. I'm not really a reactor though. Like I, I'm usually pretty quiet when I'm watching something just because I'm trying to focus on what I'm looking at. So I don't know how actually entertaining that was, but saw a bit of the console arts I assume there which was kind of unexpected but whatever um I probably will play it it does like from the comments someone gave me it does sound like there's seven arts though so but I'm sure they're like shorter but still um if you want me to play them f l feel free to leave a comment about it too I mean, I'm sure most people will since it's still Higurashi but it's not like I have a a game plan after Higurashi, really, so, but I probably will, most likely, just, just want to know, I don't know, maybe there's somebody watching that's like, Aiden, I get physically sick when I hear you're planning on playing the console arts, please don't do it, then, you know, I might, I might not have to, <laughs> but no, enough memes about that, um, but yeah, just let me know if you want me to, also, like, how long it would take. Because if it's another seven, then that's like another another year down. <laughs> another year and a bit down the drain. Not down the drain, but, you know, dedication. Um, next, I want to talk about the end of last chapter. It was brought up in the comments. I was about, like, Xion's final outburst. I was trying to bring it up, too, but... It was like an hour and 30 minutes. So I was like, oh, I'll just leave it to the next one. So don't worry, I noticed it. <laughs> what, you think I would miss anything? The genius big brainer himself. But in her outrage, she's like, oh, Mion, give me back my name. It was mine to begin with. Um, obviously, literally, that means that Xion was originally Mion, and then they switched, and then they kind of just kept it that way. Um... First, I want to note that this happened after Xion had a conversation with a ghost Satoshi. <laughs> so, I, I, I obviously, I want to be a bit skeptical on that. Like, I don't even think... Like, I, I do believe the Sonozakis could have killed Satoshi, but they're, like, on... Out of my three main suspects, they're on the bottom, so I don't necessarily believe Satoshi's even down that well. So, I think Xion might just be delusional there <laughs> obviously she's not in a right state of mind um but yeah if they are i mean i guess i could see it it made sense with like my time and before how xion's more of a demon while Mion just has the name and the tattoo um i guess they would have to switch pre-tattoo um, I don't know exactly when Mion got her tattoo, though, so it's hard to comment on that. They also, But they also had to switch before the damn conflict happened, because Mion has all the memories of that happening. And Xion doesn't really care too much about it, so that's... <coughs> so that's something to note. Um, it also means Xion's story about being strangled as a baby might, might not be wrong, unless... It's, it's either, like, not right, or, like, Mion, you know, got strangled, or, um, or you strangled the baby, but then forgot which one she strangled, and named, named it Mion anyways, which, I mean, it could happen, but you'd think they would, like, 
it was such a sensitive topic they would um do it more carefully right like properly separate them valleys for a bit but who knows it could happen so what also it could just be figuratively that's kind of the <clears throat> that's kind of the way i was doing before like when i first read it like throughout this chapter the idea that mian and Shion are the same people which is kind of like or they're interchangeable which is like one of my opinions before this chapter and i was kind of separating them but now that this happened it's kind of bringing back that interchanger interchangeable back it's uh, to me it was like Shion was saying oh i could have been you and if i was in your position then i would have saved satoshi so like even if even if mion is Mion and Shion is Shion. Um, it's not like what? It's not like Mion could do anything. She's like pretty terrified of Shion right now. So I th I'm pretty sure she whether Shion is Mion. Um, she's just gonna yoink the name anyways. And it's not like uh, Mion can do anything about that. It's also very confusing talking about this. <laughs> I don't know how many people are actually getting this. I'm getting confused myself. I think the on the like maybe. <laughs> Oh man, I, I forgot your name. I should memorize it now that you're commenting way more, but maybe that's why the guy's like, oh, Shion's a nice person despite going through so much. Because he was talking about uh, Mion. I'm just, for now, I'm just gonna stick with uh, calling our OG characters Mion and Shion. It's much easier to me. I associate Mion with the cuteness and Shion with the crazy. <laughs> um. And again, it's not like we have conclusive evidence. I do want like a hint or something. If they show me it in the hints to better explain it, then I can fully accept it. But for now, again, it's it's a literal crazy Xi'an saying this. Like, how much can you actually believe? And I think from this point on, Xi'an's just gonna take Mian's name, whether it's true or not. And it's not like Mian can, uh, can stop it. So what does this mean for the actual, like, story of things? Like, the mystery itself? I don't think it means much. <laughs> I, if they're interchangeable and they change names, it doesn't actually matter too much. Um, I don't know, it makes more sense with the ending, where it's like, oh, I think Xi'an loved you, KG, or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it doesn't actually matter. I think the only part where it could matter is who died at the end of the well, because it depends how the police identified Mion's body. Um, we've had this conversation before in the theories, where I was arguing it's incredibly hard to identify who it was, because then identical twins have 99% the DNA. So if they... So if, like, the police identified it through the tattoo and stuff, then it would be confirmed the Mion we know. But if they identified it through the fingerprints and the teeth, which are the only way to identify um, identical twins genetically who still look exactly the same, because obviously they didn't look different when they grew up, um, then it's actually Xion at the bottom of the well, and Mion kind of fought back and yoinked her in there. I kind of like that idea because at the end, it's like, um, it's like Mion, it kind of made sense why Mion commits suicide, the suicide at the end. So Mion fights back against Xion at the end, she gets thrown down the well, or, or Mion was, or Xion was just trying to escape and leave the sister in the cage, and then she fell down the well with, I mean, it, it actually made, it's actually pretty, um, it made sense thematically, right? Because Xion falls down the well where she believes Satoshi is and then they can be together forever. Or or doing it, doing Xion real bad, she finds out that Satoshi isn't there and now she's just stuck in the well forever. I think that's a pretty good ending if that was the case. So I kind of liked that. Um, and then when Mion, when Mion uh, survives, she starts having PTSD of freaking Xion. So, so now Mion's just living as Xi'an because she's still scared of her. And um, she has PTSD or whatever and f goes crazy and kills herself. I really like that theory. That actually sounds omega spicy. I'm going to lock that in for now. I don't. Obviously, it's not really too much of a 
going to be a theory at the end because we're literally down at sea. But for now, since we're reading it, getting to the end, I'm going to call it that uh, Mion actually pushes Xion down the well and then lives as Xion but then kills herself while Xion's dead in the well and she either realizes Satoshi isn't there and it's a sad death or she thinks Satoshi's with her and then she's happy about it. But yeah, that's actually really good. I didn't even think about that while... While, um... <laughs> while, th while plotting this out. But another important thing... Okay, actually, no. That's that's all for that. Um, I do want to comment on the chapter itself. I really enjoy Xion in this. I think her... I love emotional outbursts, obviously. I love Keiichi's. And Xion's, like, it's a different flavor. And it's pretty great. Obviously, the... Her awakening with the Kimiyoshi was really great too, but I I love the and <laughs> I love the Mion speech at the end too. I thought that was extra spice. I did notice. Um, obviously you look at the speech. The, there's the name thing, but at the beginning there's like the liar thing, and then you auto, then you think back to like Rena yelling liar in um on her talk to she. So it's gonna connect those two, but then when I thought about it more, I'm pretty sure Satoko also yelled liar before yeeting Keiichi off the bridge. So for some reason, all three killers are like yelling liars and doing the same thing. It kind of brings back to the idea, which it, it's not really cheating, but when I was like looking for a CG, like through my game files for the reaction video, like I was looking through the Honor Takashi and watching Adashi, I did, I did notice, which I remembered, but I didn't remember exactly. Like in Anutakushi, there's like two CGs that are almost the same. One with uh, Mion or Xion looking through the door and one with Rena. It's like people are mimicking each other's actions. So maybe like, maybe like the Hidurashi, at least for the fifth year, is like mimicking an act. I mean, maybe just all the years, but it doesn't really make sense for all the years. Like the fifth and fourth year is just mimicking but something happened, like, that's why Rena, when she's crazy, does the liar thing. Like, it's all mimicking one initial scene, <clears throat> if that made sense. I don't know how that works. That's obviously goes into supernatural territory, which I don't theorize a lot, because you can't really theorize a lot about that, but I think it's something to note. Whew. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> still still morning and still gotta wake my throat up but after a 12 minute intro we got it all out there let's go this chapter is gonna be extra spicy though but I'm, i imagine next episode is going to be because it's usually the latter half of the chapter but um yeah bad times for satoko and rika i think um kimiyoshi's still alive <laughs> uh pretty funny i i I mean, honestly, I'm not looking forward to Rika and Satoko's torture, but I'm interested in seeing the methods. They've all been pretty unique. <laughs> it's the saddest in me. So they're still, <laughs> even though Xion's kind of claimed the name, they're still doing Xion as the header, which is good. That would have been very confusing to me. <laughs> I was scared. Bed at three. I feel you. Actually, I've been sleeping better now. But yes, last night was the first sleep I've gotten in a while without drinking chamomile tea, so obviously improving. <laughs> <laughs> did I just add, what, Mian Shian 17? I, 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 never, <laughs> I never stayed up that late. Like, 12 or 1 was my limit back then. I do remember this conversation. <laughs> I've done that. Well, I don't want to talk about it, but I've done that like when I was like 12 for one of the first mangas I read online <laughs> called Girlfriends, I think. Wait, 
Mm. Yo, Renna, you wanna do something? <laughs> you you wanna you wanna show any clues that you're the killer? Well, it's still. Mm. I, like I said before, I'm willing to snip the part where Renna was cosplaying during the torture stuff with KG. If if Xion dies in the well, Mion commits suicide later. Then Renna can stab KG all she wants. I'll be fine with that. Oh, or if you want to get the spookiness that I just said, it's like copying each other or whatever. You can say that like, nah, actually no, that's weird. That's that's too s spooky for me. I can't think. I I, can't, I don't even think I can articulate what I was trying to say. I went to the Furude shrine to join the youth group in their search for the mayor. Since I knew there was no way he would be found, it was really boring for me. Well, just enduring sleepiness wasn't that bad. Not if you considered what Kim Yoshi had to go through since last night. He had been hanging from the ceiling and couldn't even fall asleep or sit down, since he had to stay on his tiptoes the whole time. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised if Kim Yoshi's literally just dead when Mian gets back, or Xion. Don't you dare take the name, Xion. That's cursed. Also, speaking of curse, I actually hurt my nail yesterday, and I, I immediately thought, oh boy, it's telling me to record Higurashi. Or it was punishing me for doing the reaction video instead of recording that night. <laughs> the teacher, it's, it's like bruised, but... Which is really inconvenient, because I, I didn't realize how much I used my middle finger <laughs> in my daily life, but um, it's fine now, kind of. The teacher explained to us that the mayor had gone missing and asked if we knew anything. A couple of people said some things, but they were irrelevant. To me, this issue meant nothing, but it was all my classmates were talking about. Maybe this is the day Keiichi taught to Rika. I still don't know the exact time frame. I observed Keiichi, my bro. I had no idea if any, danger, any type of danger was drawn closer to him. Maybe I'd call him again tonight, pretending to be Xion. I told him some outrageous stuff last night, so he panicked. Though it was a couple days, right? Because Keiichi was saying he was... He was talking to Xion through, through a couple of days. So maybe that it'll be more chapters. We, <laughs> we get more torture, I guess. But I was sure he'd calm down after a day. At that time, I heard a little girl's laughter. It was Rita Furude the last survivor of the Furude family and their current head. However, she wasn't really treated as one. During the family council, she'd often draw pictures or take a nap in the head's bed. She wasn't even invited to last night's meeting. It's interesting. I don't... So, I think this can either go like... Xion baited Rita to come in and kill her, or Rita's actually going to confront Xion and kill her. I don't know which one's which. But it, it kind of seems like Xion's having a hard time and probably doesn't want to torture, but like, who knows with the demon. So I kind of want to lean to like, Rita actually tries to like, stop her. Because we do know Rita had like a syringe in her pocket, whatever that means, but um, I mean, I guess we'll see. We should get a move on. <laughs> it was hard to believe such a little girl was responsible for part of the curse system. However, even though she wasn't in a respected position as the head of the Furude family, there was plenty of old people who worshipped her as the reincarnation of Oyashiro-sama. I'd heard from someone that Rika Furude was rather odd, and seemed to behave as if she knew she was that reincarnation. Ah, oh, bringing that up. Maybe Takano-san had told me that at the library when she was alive. When Rika Furude became worried about something, the elderly people who worship her would make arrangements. It was very similar to the Sonozaki family, and it was the same system used for curses. I mean, sim I, I guess technically it's similar, but I'm sure Rika was just using it for, like, free food or whatever. <laughs> While the Sonozakis, I, can, I guess you can see them actually using it for killing. I wonder, does Rika Furude know anything about the deaths of Takano-san and Tomotaki-san? What does she think of people sneaking into the ritual storehouse? Well, you, I'd imagine that'd be one thing she wouldn't like. <laughs> does she know who snuck in and what happened to those people? As one of, 
as the one managing the storehouse, it was possible that she noticed the intruders first. Hey, another managing thing. I didn't even say it. What if Rita's the manager? Woo. I mean, she wasn't dead in Anatachi. She... I'm just throwing those out there, though. I, I honestly don't know. Or I gave my guesses. I don't need to change them right now. Though they said managing, keep that in mind. <laughs> In fact, she was the only one who could have noticed it. She must have passed on that information, which is why the curse was executed. I mean, how would she know? Wasn't she literally, like, in the middle of a dance? I... I don't know. That foolish Keiichi turned the light on when we went into the ritual storehouse. The light switch could have been connected to some kind of an alarm. Rike Furude, the leader of the Furude family. Maybe getting to know her would be a good idea. I asked her rather directly. It's hard to tell if she understood I was asking her in the place of the Sonozaki family head. Instead of instead of as me on Sonozaki. Rita answered. The news hadn't been made public yet, she knew about it. Ah, well I mean I I, I guessed that. <laughs> Though, again, it, it could either be directly through her position, or it could be through her freaking big mind, or, I don't know, whatever, her information transmissions. <laughs> Although she looked immature, perhaps she truly was the head of the Furude family. Mm. I tried to be vague to see how Rika Frude would react. I had been thinking that she had nothing to do with the underside of Hinomizawa since she was always treated like a child. However, Rika had just said things about the incident which normal people shouldn't know anything about. That proved she belonged to the underside's network. She answered the question about Tomotachi-san and Takano-san fairly quickly, but took a little longer to answer this time. Did she have to think about it? Shit, the look on her face never changes. It's impossible to figure out what she's thinking. Her response was unexpected, especially after seeing all the old people get so furious last night. Huh. Maybe she wasn't too mad about the ritual thing. To trespass in the ritual storehouse was blasphemy against the Yashiro Sama. I think that just obviously supports the idea that Tatano and Tomotaki were killed for other reasons too. Maybe the ritual storehouse was just icing on the cake. The village elders had said those intruders deserved to die. Yet the leader of the Furude family, who protected the sacred storehouse for ritual implements, said that if they felt remorse for it, that then it was fine. I recalled how people thought of Rika Furude's father during the dam conflict. Yeah, I guess the father was pretty passive too. Yes, her father was called an opportunist back then. He didn't agree with the Anigafuchi guardians. I still don't like the switch. I been at the Anidofuchi Defense Alliance, dude. It sounded so much cooler. <laughs> Who had resisted violently during the conflict. Like father, like daughter. I aggressively grabbed Rika Fruity by the doll. Look at that Rika expression, though. She's like... It's not like she's scared. She's like, kind of like... Glinting? Is that what you call it? Glinting at us? <laughs> Shion's face. Huh? Ooh, trying to hit some jabs, huh? We don't know how Rita feels about her parents. Hello, train. I laughed at myself. I was told the same thing by someone else and was now saying it to Rita. 
It's kind of true. Like Mion was pretty, pretty mad about it too, which is just chilling, huh? Saigudenは親城様の大切な場所なのです。勝手に入ったりとかしちゃったメナとコなのです。分かってるじゃない。そこに毛枯れを持ち込んだんだよ。あの四人は。悪い猫さんなのです。He's not talking about dogs, dude. Ren is the dog. Everyone else is a cat. It's confirmed. Yeah. <laughs> そうだね。悪い猫だ。2匹は捕まえてお仕置きした。あと2匹いる。にゃあ。どうけじめをつけるべきだろうね。古でけ投手のご意見を聞かせてよ。Rita really didn't use she wear any expression whatsoever, making it impossible to tell what she was thinking. But while I grabbed her by the collar and stared at her, I could tell somehow. Rika was a little disturbed. I sensed she was trying to see what I was thinking in turn. ボクは2匹の猫さんは許してあげたいです。それでけじめになると思ってんの。みけじめって言葉が僕にはよくわからないです。ああ、いい質問だね。じゃあお勉強しよう。けじめってのはね、罪を贖うってことなの。罪は残せない。親城様のお怒りを放置することになるんだからね。だから罪の大きさに比例したけじめで罪を清めなければならないの。わかるよね。親城様は別に最後で見られても怒らないのですよ。はあ？あんた何言ってんの？あの中を見
think this was brought on by a Mion explaining herself during the Rika Renna confrontation. Or Shion. The last part was something I added on a whim. I added it to connect Rika's story to the disappearance of Kimiyoshi. I wanted to pressure her psychologically by doing so. Kimiyoshi Rita was still on the floor, tears pouring down her cheeks. Oh, Kimiyoshi was crying. Rita was crying. Rita hung her head. She seemed to want to say something, but she was afraid I might be rough with her again. I doubted Rita Furude was actually at the top of the curse system like the Hague was. However, as one of the three family heads, she was a lot closer to the underside of Hinomizawa than I was. By now, that underside was well aware of Keiichi Maibura. I told the elderly leaders of the village yesterday in the meeting that Keiichi Maibura was the last one remaining. I just told the head of the Furude family the same thing, if threateningly. If my threat was effective, the curse of Yashiro Sama should be very should very soon fall upon Kichi Maibra. And at just the right time I would grab my enemy and as, as he took my bait. If the assassin came from the Frude family, this girl would have committed the same sin as the Hague. When that time time when that time came I wouldn't hold back. I was going to make sure she suffered and then killed her kill her. I've heard of t a torture technique where you pound dozens of nails into the victim's fingers. Ah, we know that one. <laughs> I already found a restraining table and the tools for it. When the time comes, I'll pound nails into your fingers. That gruesome anticipation radiated from my eyes and scared Rita even further. Well, maybe that answers my question. <laughs> But maybe Rita still confronts her, but <laughs> it's it's leaning to the other option, huh? <laughs> I wonder how Kimiyoshi's doing. She's not dead. I doubt he died from tiptoeing all night, but sometimes a human can go very easily. I mean, tiptoeing all night sounds pretty rough. He already told me everything I wanted to hear, but he doesn't know anything else anyway. On top of that, he was responsible for spreading the infection that was the curse system of Oyashiro Sama. His sins are very heavy. I really liked Uncle Kimiyoshi. He had always been kind. The hate was so tough on her relatives. And that's why he was extra nice to me. When we talked yesterday, I was so happy to hear him say he would forgive Xion. He even said he would fight the hate to save her. That made me very happy. Don't worry. If Xion Chen feels bad about what she's done, she won't be demoned away. Leave it to me. I felt such warmth inside of me. I almost shivered. I was so happy, yet so very sad. For he continued to say that Satoshi Kun deserved to die. He said those nice things because he wanted to make Mion happy, since she was worried about Xion. Satoshi Kun deserved to die because he was a member of the cursed Hojo family. But Xion Chan of the Sonazaki family did not. That's what he meant. In other words, to the leaders of the village, including Kimiyoshi, members of the Hojo family are more contemptible than insects. They didn't care if they lived or died. Their sins was not only that they despised the Hojo family, so, but they also but also that they let the hatred infect the rest of the village. Therefore, anyone in the village deserves to be a victim of the curse of Oyashiro-sama. Kimiyoshi and the others created an environment. Oh, one second. Alright. Kimiyoshi and the others created an environment that excused murder in that name. If that was so... 
If Takano-san and Tomotaki-san hadn't committed the serious crime of trespassing in the ritual storehouse. Whoa! Tepe got a spray? <laughs> Look at that guy, he looks so evil. That's... Maybe thumbnail material. Look at that. Look at Tepe. Looking straight gangster. Then Satoshi, Satoko Hojo, the last survivor of the Hojo family, and Tepe Hojo, who has been hiding in Otonomia, might have been the victims. Satoko Hojo. She was always around Satoshi Tren. She expected Satoshi Tren to help her every time she cried. She was one of the people who cornered him. If Satoko wasn't that much of a burden, Satoshi Tren wouldn't have killed his aunt. Somebody told Satoshi Kun to commit that murder. And to hide the evidence of his connection to the mastermind, Satoshi Kun was demoned away. That's what Oishi thought. If Satoshi Kun hadn't killed his aunt, maybe he wouldn't have been chosen as last year's victim. Because the commands are, were vague, after all, the curse of Oyashiro sama fell upon the Hojo family as a whole. It didn't matter which member of the family died. His aunt had a terrible reputation in the neighborhood. She didn't communicate with the neighbors, she always, she was always throwing fits and there is nothing nice about her in any way. Even if Satoshi Kun didn't kill her, the curse would have fallen upon her sooner or later. Their aunt was the first victim. There needed to be another Hojo to calm the curse. According to the rumor, their uncle was living somewhere in Otonomia with his lover. However, Okonomiya was a little different from Hinomizawa. The Sonozaki was, family was powerful there as well, of course, but it would have been more difficult in Okonomiya to demon, away, demon someone away. So naturally, Satoshi, Kun, and Satoko, who were still in Hinomizawa, became the targets. Which one should be cursed? That was simple. Satoko, of course. She was snobby and lacking in manners. Everyone in the neighborhood liked Satoshi Kun, even if he was the son of the Hojo couple who betrayed the village during the dam conflict. Compared to Satoko, he didn't deserve to die. Therefore, the actual victims of last year's curse should have been his aunt and Satoko. Splash. Satoshi Kun was suddenly all alone. His mean aunt and uncle, mean uncle were gone. His sister, who was a burden on him all his life, was gone too. Satoshi Kun was a nice person. He would be sad, although he realized he was finally free. But time would heal him. I'd even help. He didn't have to live in his house in Hinamizawa. There were plenty of empty rooms in the apartment block where I lived. I could find him a part-time job too. He didn't need to go to school in Hinamizawa. He could go to school with me in Okonomi instead. He wouldn't know his way around or really anything about the school there, so I'd be with Satoshi Kun all the time. I'd show him a shortcut to school, we'd go shopping and I'd teach him many different things. What an un unbelievably happy ending. Satoshi Kun had been suffering so much and I'd been pushed away all my life, but we would finally be happy. I enjoyed these sweet delusions, but I didn't have any more time to waste. I was sure there are plenty of old people who have been trying to get a hold of Oryu all morning and who were going to try to catch me after I got home from school. Actually, the phone had been ringing constantly while I enjoyed my happy thoughts. When I answered the phone, I casually listened and replied. As I planned, Kichi Maira was now known as the next curse victim within the underside of Kina Mizawa. I also tried to let them know that the disappearance of the village chief had something to do with the fact that he changed a lot on the ritual storehouse's door. All the authorities in the underside came to realize the seriousness of trespassing in the storehouse. After all, one of the three heads, one of the heads of the three families got punished. One of the phone calls was from Oishi. He had also heard about Kimiyoshi's disappearance and he knew it had something to do with the change of the lock. I'm impressed. He has some pretty good sources. But all he can do is catch whatever information he can get. There's no way for him to find out where it's coming from. 
I called Keiichi and my brother again later tonight. Some of the more aggressive villagers may have already started taking action around him. I'm sure by now, Keiichi is feeling the danger that's coming toward him. I'd have to be careful that he doesn't get killed easily. If I can catch the enemy before they bit Keiichi, I can use him again as bait. Keiichi Maibra. I hadn't known him for that long. He's funny, if not intelligent. He'll never replace Satoshi Kun. But I do think he's fun to be around. There's just one thing I don't like about him. He rubs my head far too often. His hand is just as warm as Satoshi Kun's hand, which is why I can't stand it. But that's about it. Keiichi Maibra isn't Satoshi Kun's enemy. I don't hate him. He's fun to be around, but I wouldn't shed a tear for him if he became the victim of the curse. I won't prevent Keiichi and my bro from being killed, and I won't kill him myself either. Well, that changes. Maybe that changes when Keiichi finds out that Xion's... Well, he kind of. He finds out half the truth that at least Xion... Well, not really. I don't know. The semi exposes her. <laughs> I've made arrangements for the curse to fall upon him, but I never told anyone to kill him. Well, I suppose I did tell Rika Furude to take care of Keiichi Maibra. Wait a minute. To avenge Satoshi-kun, I'm doing the exact same thing as the head did. I'm using the exact same system that killed Satoshi-kun. Keiichi Maibra. I'm just using him. I told people to let the curse fall upon Keiichi, but I've been giving him appropriate warnings. I'm going to help him if he tries to live. If I catch all of my enemies, maybe I'll let him loose. He's different from Satoshi-kun. Satoshi-kun was tricked into killing his aunt and was killed himself afterwards so there wouldn't be any evidence remaining. I won't kill Keiichi Maibra. That's how I'm different from the head. Evening was turning to night. I had to get dinner ready. I had to eat so I'd have enough strength to take revenge. This place was far from town. It would it would even get isolated during the winter because of the snow. I know this is the I think this is the background for the Himasubushi place where they kidnap the grand child, but I'm not sure if this is supposed to be the same place. <laughs> It's not unusual for a household like this to have two or three refrigerators. Oh, wait. No, I think I think she's just in the house. It's, it kind of sounded like she was in a different place, but no, this is just another room. There were plenty of groceries left in them. I was glad I didn't have to go grocery shopping. I could hear the chorus of the Hidurashi. People often say that the sound of the Hidurashi brings back memories. But for me, it's the exact opposite. I've only ever heard the sound of the Hidurashi in Hinomizawa. Therefore, the sound of the Hidurashi, to me, is Hinomizawa. That I... Blah, blah, blah. The sound reminded me that I wasn't supposed to be here. That I couldn't be here. That's when I heard the doorbell. Well, Rika time? Because there was a good distance between the house and the gate, there was both the door bell and an intercom by the ladder. It had a security camera too. Something as modern as a security camera monitor in this old-fashioned kitchen looked rather strange. I turned on the switch but nothing appeared on the monitor. Wouldn't it be funny if it's Rita but she's just too s small for the monitor to catch. I tried to check the plug but there were a bunch of cords going behind the refrigerator so I couldn't even do that. The doorbell continued to ring while I tried to figure out if the monitor was broken or if I just didn't know how to turn it on. It sounds like she like looked at the monitor but no one was there. But but no, I was wrong. She she actually turned on the monitor but it just wasn't working. I only felt like answering the door depending on who it was. It'd normally be easier to pretend to be out, but that wouldn't help me. I was waiting for my enemies to show up. I couldn't just hide myself in that case. The head was supposed to be sick and, extreme, and in an extremely bad mood. I had already sent word that out that she didn't want to see anyone. So who could it be? I made up my mind and turned the intercom on. 
If it was someone unwanted, I could just turn whoever it was away. But I had to act normally so I wouldn't arouse suspicion. I had to act normally. Hi. Ah, okay. This is Rita. This turned that spicy. So Rita goes there, at least. She didn't tell me her name, but I recognized her voice. <laughs> the soy sauce. Soy sauce? I almost screamed, but I controlled myself. I took a moment to think about the situation. Hinomizawa was far from most stores, so sometimes neighbors would share seasoning and stuff with each other. <laughs> would be kind of weird. <laughs> the village sometimes got snowed in during winter, but the fruity shrine was quite far from this house. It was rather odd for her to come all the way here on her bicycle just to get some soy sauce. Maybe she was just using it as an excuse. Maybe there was something she wanted to talk to me about. That was when I noticed a piece of paper that was on the refrigerator door next to the intercom. We still have plenty of homemade soy sauce in stock. Feel free to come to the Sonazaki house if you want some. <laughs> Dude, that's unlucky. <laughs> How you get caught. The head must have given that flyer to everyone. One of our relatives sent her a barrel of soy sauce. If you want some, bring a container. That's what the flyer said. I see, this would explain it. There is a handwritten note on the bottom of the flyer. The soy sauce is in the storage under the floor. Give them as much as they want. There is a storage area beneath the floor. When I opened it, I saw a barrel of soy sauce alongside a funnel and a ladle. I didn't want Rita to notice anything suspicious at this point. I decided to share the soy sauce with her. Mm, Yay. Okay. As I headed there, I heard the doorbell ring again. People didn't pay much attention to the safety around here in Hinomizawa. People didn't think too much about locking the doors. But as someone who's lived in a town, I've always locked everything. Yeah, it's kind of unthinkable to not lock your doors. <laughs> Maybe it is different for rural places. I'm sure it is. It's just weird to think about. <laughs> To let Rita Fruita in, I'd have to go outside. Rita smiled at me. She was holding a huge soy sauce bottle. She acted like I never yelled at her, got violent with her, or made her cry at all today. Or perhaps she came to curry favor, thinking sh that she angered me. I invited Rita to the front door. I told her to wait for a moment and tried to take the bottle. But Rita took her shoes off and walked into the house with the bottle in her hands. <laughs> How can you say no to that? She looked at me as if begging. I guess she wanted to pour the soy sauce into the bottle herself. I didn't want her to come into in the house, but I suppose I didn't want her to wait there alone either. If she came to the kitchen with me, I could keep my eyes on her. And so I brought Rita to the kitchen. We walked down the hallway. I only heard my footsteps. I stopped suddenly and turned around to make sure Rita was following me. Rita bumped into me. Possible. Possible thumbnails. Ah, gome gome. I made sure she was right behind me and started to walk again. Tap, tap, tap. Tip, tip, tip. Tap, tap. Tip, tip. Rita must have been having fun matching her footsteps to mine. Even when I quickly sped up, our footsteps matched perfectly. Tap, tap. Tap, tap. Tip, tip. Tip, tip. Tap, tap, tap. I stopped suddenly. Tip, tip, tip. Rita suddenly stopped to you after taking an extra step. 
When I turned around, Rita smiled at me. Her footsteps matched perfectly, and when I suddenly stopped, I heard an extra step. I've experienced such footsteps before. It was making me feel uncomfortable. But now, although her footsteps sounded the same as the other ones I'd experienced, I saw her when I turned around. It's Rita's out-of-body experience. She follows people around. <laughs> there, explaining the footsteps. Easy. That was the difference between them. I left the storage door open so we could see the soy sauce barrel. The momo said she can take as much as she wants, but I wasn't sure there was enough left. I crouched down and tried to open the lid of the soy sauce barrel. Even when I crouched down, I could hear Rita's extra step. Mm, Ooh, look at that face. <laughs> That's a spooky Rita. Uh, I mean, it just looks like a smud Rita, but... <laughs> Blast image. When I turned around, Rita was very close to me. But, eh? Who was this? I saw Rita, but it wasn't Rita at all. It was like when I switched with my sister. The outside was the same, but the inside was different. Did Rita have a twin sister? I was confused for a moment. That was when Rita sprayed something from a small bottle into my eyes. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I felt a terrible pain in my eyes and suddenly tears poured out of my nose and started to run. I couldn't stop sneezing either. What, pepper spray I guess? As I stumbled around covering my face, I then realized I was a tat. I shut my eyes tightly for a moment then opened them again. Rita was about to grab my hair and drag me onto the floor. When Rita saw my eyes open, she sprayed at me again. I shut my, voice to shut my eyes to avoid the spray, but my nose still breathed in the substance. I avoided the pain in my eyes, but the tears, the runny nose, and the sneezing continued. Shit. Ah. My brain isn't working quickly enough. However, when I finally understood that I... I had been attacked by Rita Frude. My brain started to grind into motion. Rita Frude knocked me on my back and got on top of me. I tried to escape from her, from her by rolling on the kitchen floor. As I rolled, I hit an oven, a huge jar, and destroyed a pile of something on the floor as I fought back. But Rita didn't let go of me. She stayed on top and restrained me. She was sitting on my stomach and I felt intense pain and pressure. She sure could fight well. I still couldn't see anything. Rita had the upper hand, my eyes were shut, and I was in real danger. As I tried to blink, I saw Rita's expression. I didn't know Rita Frude all that well. I only knew her from the few times we met when I went to school as Mion and the things I've heard from other people. But as far as I knew, there's no way Rita Frude would ever do something like this. This was just impossible, impossible, impossible. No, I can't fill my heads with that fill my head with that word. After calm down and figure out what to do next. Shit, I'm too much of a mess to even think. I tried to peek at her face again. She still had the spray bottle in one hand. What I didn't expect was the thing in her other hand. How could I mistake it for anything else? It was definitely a syringe. There we go. When Rita realized I'd regained my eyesight, she pointed the spray bottle right at me and let loose with it. I shut my eyes tightly and tried to ignore the pain, but that was when I thought, but that was when, even though I was blinded, Rita made a miscalculation. She had sprayed me in such a close distance that she inhaled the substance as well. I had Rita sneeze and realized that it was my chance. Even if I couldn't see, I knew she was right there. I hit Rita's face a few times. When I felt Rita's weight shift, I escaped. CG? It's a little spice. <laughs> With her taser. I then, I then got my stun gun ready. Rita must have inhaled just a little of the spray. She wasn't sneezing anymore and was glaring at me instead. <laughs> Want me to wreck you? 
Rita's expression didn't change, but I was sure she was disappointed that her surprise attack was a failure. Rita flinched just a little, but she was still holding the spray bottle and aiming it at my eyes. She was trying to use the spray first, and then give me the shot. I didn't know what was in that syringe, but it was a clear liquid. I had to be, it had to be something bad. She wanted to take my eyesight, get on top of me, and then give me the shot. If whatever was in the syringe took a while to take effect, I might have the chance to fight back and seriously injure Rika. But Rika's surprise attack told me that just being injected was more than enough. In other words, whatever the effect, it would start to work immediately. Therefore, I wouldn't be able to fight back against her. It'd probably either knock me out or kill me. In any case, what I had was equally deadly. My stun gun was very powerful. Just one shot would be all it took. And... Wait, what happened was before... What happened before was proof of its power. <laughs> Rika knew my stun gun was a lot more powerful than her spray. She was being extremely cautious. I threw a pile of newspapers at her. The pile wasn't tied together, so the newspapers flew all over Rika. It jumped at her immediately after. I shoved my stun gun into her and pulled the trigger. Rita spasmed and fell to the floor. You fool. Hesitating in a fight where a single blow wins. Only amateurs just glare at each other. You don't have a single clue about how advantageous the first strike is when a single blow can decide everything. The spray bottle rolled on the ground, but she still had the syringe. Rika was down, but I couldn't let my guard down either. I kicked her in the side and clambered on top of her. I took the syringe. I held Rika's arms down and gave her the shot. My actions could hardly be called gentle. I injected her violently. I injected everything that was in the syringe. Rika began to convulse. I stood back and watched for what would happen to her body. Of course, I still had my guard up. While I, while I assumed the drug would incat, incapacitate her immediately, I didn't know what exactly... I didn't know exactly what kind of reaction she would have. <laughs> After a few more convulsions, Rika unsettledly got to her feet. That's ridiculous. How can she even stand? I looked at my stun gun. Damn it. The power was on the lowest setting. Maybe it had been readjusted when we were rolling around on the floor. I changed the setting to maximum. Rita turned pale and started sweating all over. I didn't know what its exact effects, but if Rita had given me the shot, I'd be the one experience her symptoms. She looked really sick, so obviously she must have been feeling awful too. She couldn't even focus. She was very wobbly and had her hand on the wall. She lost her balance, and it must have been hard for her to even stand. She didn't look so brave anymore. Rika wobbled some more and moaned as if she were she was about to throw up. Is that a new sound, Han Yu? Rita looked scary as if she... <laughs> I just saw... Uh, because the Hanny thing kind of reminded me of Hanny was from Rants. Hanny was. <laughs> Rita looked scary as she moaned and wobbled. But at the time, she looked kind of funny too. Certainly, she hadn't even dreamed she'd been getting the shot herself. As a man sows, so shall he reap. That's what you got. <laughs> <笑>目が回ってるのかな
楽しい楽しい地下サイグデンになる場所を移すためにちょいと眠っててもらうよ<笑> I walked up to Rika my stun gun making popping sounds when Rika saw the spreads from my stun gun she moved to grab a huge kitchen knife おやまだその程度の元気はあるわけだ<笑>そうでなくちゃ面白くないよあんたにはいろいろ聞きたいことがあるしね無駄に抵抗しない方がいろいろと辛くないよ。もっとも抵抗しなくても辛い目に遭うだろうけど。<笑>残念だけど、あんたの誘いは断るわ。この冷血女が。What she said wasn't anything I expect to hear from Rika, I knew. But I didn't hesitate. I had the advantage, so I didn't need to worry. Besides, this was coming from the last survivor of the Furday family, one of the three families. That sudden change somehow felt natural. Antarano Gosanke no Chinurareta Lexini Kurabetara. What a soreo furudeke toshi sama ni homete morae nante ne. Chotto koe da ne. Nde? Sono fura fura na karada de. Pocho ipon de teko shi mi se. Tate iru dake de mo genkai na kse ni. So ne. あんたの言う通りこお前なんかに召し取られて殺されるくらいなら悪いけどお先に退場させてもらうわ退場<笑>できるならしてごらんよ It was clear who held the advantage here But despite that, an odd thrill filled both of us We lost our minds was in a fitting phrase for the people of Hinomizawa It was a feeling of release when modern demons could stop pretending to be human. Yes, this was a mad banquet of demons with the savoring blood and devouring of flesh. Attended by the head of the Fude family and the head of the Somozaki family, the old families whose blood is closest to the madness of the demons, I stood in front of the hallway as so, so as to block her escape route. The windows had grates and the door had a safety chain on it. If she, if she turned around, I'd hit her with my stun gun. In this situation, what did Rika mean by taking her leave? Rika got her knife ready. I'd spotted her to aim it at my stomach when she attacked, so I took the stance with my stun gun, stun gun ready in my hand. Rika, however, suddenly turned around. I carefully watched to see what her next move would be. Rika put the handle of the knife to the wall and held it in place. What was she doing? Suicide? Ah. Rika reared her head back and slammed her throat against the kitchen. Knife on the wall? Ew. Why is she doing it like that? Why didn't she just like cut her throat? So what? She's like putting it on the wall and then slamming her like. Her throat against it? Sad. That's unique, I like it. Sounds gross. Her blood splattered all over. New song too. Rika bent backwards repeatedly and let the new f let the knife slash at her throat. Again and again. Her neck and chest were dyed red. I'd always thought blood was darker. But her blood wasn't dark. It was so bright. I must have been confused, but it looked pretty. After doing this several times, Rita turned around. Her eyes were wide open. She didn't look like she was from this world. Her face looked like something both living and dead, both real and artificial. It was very scary, eerie, and above all else, pale. Although her face looked unearthly, it was very appropriate. It was a very appropriate face for a demon. I didn't have a mirror, so I couldn't tell. But I was sure I looked exactly like her. Rika continued to violently slash her throat. It reminded me of something trying to break a huge piece of ice with an ice pick. That was exactly what Rika looked like. The white chips of ice coolly flying in through the air. What I saw before me was a beautiful sight. Every time Rita struck her throat, tiny drops of blood splattered the boring white world around her. It was like a dance. 
A dedication dance by the final head of the Furude family. The demon's last dance of dedication to Oyashiro-sama. Upon seeing that literally blood-curling dance, I let out a fierce roar. I had no reason to do so, I was howling like an animal. We were all animals trying to kill each other, both getting covered in blood. And inevitably, as one convulsed in a pool of that blood, the other knew, threw back its head and howled. My body shivered with the joy I felt inside me. This was death, the most final of judgments, and it was right before me. The demons howled. I screamed and roared. The roars faded, and my voice started to change from the voice of a demon back to that of a human. As a demon, I roared, but as a human, I sneered. Rita was covering was covered in blood from her neck down. Her blood was pouring out, making a little noise. Rika was still staring into my eyes. I stared back at her. I wasn't sure if they were still eyes though. They were no longer human eyes, but the eyes of the dead. Rika. No, Rika's corpse vomited blood from her mouth and her nose and then smiled and smiled. She then then she dropped the knife. She stuck her hands out and turned her palms upward. Her whittling fingers reminded me of an insect's legs. Those fingers reached for her own throat. I'd never seen anything like that. I'd never seen anyone do this before. Oh, is she ripping her throat out? Because Rika was scratching her own throat. She was ripping her own throat apart. Maybe that wasn't a good description. She was trying to rip out the inside of her throat through the opening she made with the knife. Her fingers found the biggest tear. Rika smiled. At least that's what I at least that's what I would have called it if she were alive. She ripped open her, open the tear in one tug. <gasps> Upon hearing my scream, Rika died and fell on her face. Into a pool of blood. That was it. She didn't get up again to show me her throat. I stepped back from Rika Fude's body and bumped into the wall in the hallway. Rah! <laughs> I roared again in an admiration of the ritual dance of dedication of the head of the Furude family. Joy ran through my body, and my blood rushed through my veins. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I then realized I disposed of the heads of the three families, the core of the curse of Oyashiro-sama. So Rita died, wait. <laughs> Obviously I'll talk more about it at the end. I was warned that Rita would say something that I shouldn't brutal. I guess I can't look back. I don't really think of anything that she said something differently. The Hanny thing. Is that a, I, I didn't think that was a real word. <laughs> I mean, I guess it is. Maybe it's like the curse. Han you. Han you. Han you. Han you. I'm guessing that's the word. Okay. Well, I was told not to doodle that word. Even looked it up in a dictionary, so I won't. Obviously, it's a Japanese word, so I don't know. <laughs> that was more important than I thought, huh? I thought it was just like another... I thought it was more death noises. <laughs> like her trying to speak. <laughs> but maybe that was her. Maybe it was something else. Well, either way, I completely missed... I completely missed whatever it was, so I guess that's good for me. <laughs> Everything was finally exposed. The curse of Oyashiro-sama and its masterminds were all exposed. I disposed of the leaders of the three families who all killed Satoshi-kun. That of the Sonozaki family died of a heart attack. She was at the bottom of the well, along with a wheelchair. I apprehended the head of the Kimiyoshi family. He continued to tiptoe until he died. That of the Furude family died, in a way that was perfect for the final head of the three families of Anudofuchi. I did it. I accomplished my mission. I defeated all the masterminds, who killed Satoshi-kun with the curse. Everyone. 
Satoshi-kun, you are powerless. You didn't have the means to fight back. Those evil people simply sneered while I let you die. After making you, marking you as a member of the cursed Hojo family, I will never ever forgive them. They believe you deserve to die because you are one of the Hojos. As long as it was done by the curse of Oyashiro-sama, they didn't care how you were killed. I will never forgive those people for creating this world. What could I have done to save you, Satoshi-kun? I couldn't save you. Shion Tonozaki couldn't do anything else at that time. If I was Mion, not Shion, if I was Mion that day, I could have saved you. Mion could have saved you. That's right, I remember now. Shion. She said she wanted to eat red snapper sashimi that day. I was supposed to eat that, but Shion pouted and cried. That's why I let her switch just for that night. I did it to make her happy like a big sister would. Shion was never treated well, so I felt bad. That was it. I was being a good sister, that was it. When morning came, the world had been turned upside down and it remained so until that day. Then she got the tattoo. We weren't twins anymore. The one with the demon was Mian and the one without the demon was Shion. What was that supposed to mean? Wait, wait, mom, listen. I'm Mian, not her. You didn't tell us apart, right, mom? Look, can't you tell I'm Mian? Come on, everyone, tell me I'm Mian. I'm Mian. Don't call me Shion. I'm Mion, I am. Interesting. Again, can I get a hint of that? あんたは知っていたんだ。あの夜、新類たちが集まって何をするのか、ただの宴会じゃないって知っていたんだ。知らない、知らない。本当に知らなかったの。はあ、なわけないでしょ。あんた、あの日だけ嫌にしつこく絡んできたじゃない。タイの刺身なんて食べたことない。食べてみたい。いつもミオンばかりずるい私にもって。普段ならおとなしくなっとくするくせに、あの日だけ必要に。知らないの。
すごいよ体全体が言うことを聞く頭の回転が優れた気がするそうだよミオンは万能なんだミソカスのシオンとは違う落ちこぼれのくせに下手なミオンのふりなんかしやがってそれが私にとってどれだけムズがゆかったことかわかるでしょあんたにならしようはいおねえ She on told me sis. And so I was me on. Ah. The demon who had been asleep deep inside of me was finally allowed to wake up. The demon roared, and my whole body shivered to express its joy. Sion, Anta ni wa tsumi ga aru. Anta wa ima made Mion datta. Sono zaki ke no oni o tsumu Mion to yu tsuyoi tachiba ga ari nagara. Satoshi kun o sukuwa na katta, sukuwa to shi na katta! サトシ君を救うための100億の瞬間があったはずなのにあんたはその全てを見殺しにすることを選んだんだ私は許さないお前を許さないお前が私だったらサトシ君を救えていたのにお前が私を奪いサトシ君を殺したことを私は絶対に許さない Shion was shaking on the other side of the bars 私はお前を殺すだろう絶対に殺すサトシ君の胸に見合う殺し方をしてやるお前を一番残酷に殺す方法が何なのか今日から毎日考えて過ごしてやるシオンは私がそれを思いつくまでのわずかな日々をいつ殺されるのかどう殺されるのかに怯えながら過ごすがいい簡単には殺さない無ごたらしく殺す殺した後はサトシ君と同じ井戸に放り投げてやる Well, there's that But I still think me on to the... turn the tables then We'll see that そしてサトシ君にあの世で謝ってこい<笑>それが私を語り続けてきたことへの報いだ報い報いお前の罪うチャプターブレイク。No, yes, no, yes, no, no, okay, well, I'll, I'll keep going. As I said, it's midday, so not really in a rush to sleep. <laughs> I needed to at least clean up the kitchen. While I was putting old newspapers on the floor to observe the blood, the phone rang. Oh, that's the Toko. Oh, no. No bully. <laughs> I didn't want to answer, but maybe I should. I should answer it and talk to whoever it was. Hi, Sonozaki. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was surprised to hear the Hojo name, but I realized right away that it was the Toko. Oh, Satoko? どうしたの夜分遅くに申し訳ありませんわねうちのリカがお邪魔してませんことあ、yes ever since the Toko Hojo was abandoned she had been living with Rika for a day of course she gets suspicious that Rika hadn't returned yet あ、来てるよあら、まだお邪魔してますのもう夕飯の時間ですのにねえ、さとこ実はね今日さ、ジョイとおかずを作りすぎて、リカちゃんにも夕食を振る舞ってるんだよ。え、そ、そうなんでございますの？サトコも来なよ。サトコの分もあるからさ。リカちゃんはもう食べてるよ。もうリカったら、わかりましたわ。ちょっと片付けをしてから回りますわね。Bro, just hearing this happy Satoko. <laughs> And she's about to like die, probably get tortured. It's just making me sad now.、Uh, feels bad, man. Happy Satoko, man. <laughs> God damn it. Click. There's the chapter break. Beautiful. Where do I even start? <laughs> so much happened this chapter. Um, let's start with Rita. I'm sure we can talk about it more later, but I know people probably want to hear it too. I need to think about it more later, also. Sorry, I'm just waiting for anything. Keiichi. Keiichi's dad. Ah. Ah, this is when, uh. Okay. Predictions. This is so. She already captured Satoko, and she's probably gonna. Torture her, kill her, whatever, after she searches Bakichi and Rena in、uh, Rika's house. 
but yeah, like what the heck just happened with Rita? <laughs> um, so Rita tried to, like, I don't know. So Rita attached Yon, obviously intending to inject her. What does this mean? It can mean a lot of things. It means I shouldn't. <laughs> I shouldn't just think of Rita as an observer. It's as if she's actually physically attacking people. Um, then it's obviously that she's more involved than I thought. <laughs> so how would this work? The, she did rip her own throat out. I don't know if that's just her method of suicide or is it because she took the drug? Um... They're, they're definitely implying it's the drug's fault, so I kind of want to believe it. Like, obviously, your, your instinct is not to believe it. But at the same time, um, we kind of just saw it happen like that. So it's kind of, it works better. But at the same time, it sounded like Rita was killing herself to avoid being tortured by Xi'an. So maybe that means the injection wouldn't have made her commit suicide. Or, I don't know. It could be either way. Then you asked why did Rita attack Xi'an? Um, I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if she knew it was Xi'an or Mian, but I guess she, uh, she thought it was, I don't know. Does this necessarily mean that Rita killed Tomotaki too? I mean, that could terrify him. It's it's a lot to take in, especially since I was pretty I was pretty happy with my position that Rita's not really into the murder business. Um I mean, I guess every literally everyone in this <laughs> in this series is good at acting, so why should I be surprised? Um, so obviously, she did it on her own will, or she didn't have to. Again, I I, I always compare this drug with like the clinic theory. Like, where else would you make a drug in the clinic with Tomata uh, not Tomatati, Tatano and Irie? Um, I don't know. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard to comment on. I. It was a cool scene, though. I loved the death. I loved Xi'an going crazy from that. It was very unexpected. Probably one of the best action scenes, especially since there's not too many. I'm trying to think of other action scenes. I guess summon Hima Sabushi. But yeah, that was cool. Um. I don't know. Let me think on that. I don't even know what I'll think of, but um, I'm, I I feel more inclined to believe <laughs> that that Xion is the OG Mion. But it's I don't know. <laughs> does it matter? I mean, the Sh Mion does have the branded, so that's almost just they've been living like that for so long. I don't know. It's confuses me. I'm just trying to keep the names. I don't want to change them. We, we, we're, I'm totally fine with associating Mion with the Mion we know. But I understand if you don't want to. But yeah, that was that was fun. That went by fast. So probably we'll record the rest of this chapter today. Just that I kind of want to do these in the day so I can... Uh, so I can sleep because <laughs> of how exciting this is but next time we'll see uh see what's in store for satoko and not particularly i don't think it's gonna be as epic as this it's probably just gonna make me feel sad but um yeah thanks for watching hopefully you enjoyed finish up chapter uh, 12 or whatever 11 no this is 12 right 12 next time see ya woo